in the world is Tom E. Curran? Well, he is not in Indianapolis. We know that. And I know that uh, it's been a week since we talked to our friend Tom Curran. He joins us on the Harbor One Hotline. Brought to us by Dr. Matthew Lepresti, Leonard Hair Transplant Associates, the hair doctor of Tommy Curran, a 1-800-GET-HAIR. And by Wise Snacks, no one does crunchy, salty, or cheesy better than Wise Snacks. Tom Curran, after a week off. Good afternoon, Tommy. How's everything? Everything's tremendous. How are you? We got boots on the ground with Phil Perry out in Indianapolis, but we are monitoring closely all the goings on. Where'd you, where'd you go, Tom? Where'd you where'd you get away to? Or you just this is this like a home a staycation? No, we went to see my oldest son out in Huntington Beach Ooh. for a few days. Okay, so it was great to be out there. It was rainy, but that's okay. It was good to see the boy. Okay. All right. Yeah, the weather can be uh, a little uh, up and down out there, I hear, from... Uh, well, and this time of year, yeah. yeah. Well, it's been crazy out there. We talked about the crazy weather in California for like oh, a yeah. while. It's like 10 inches of rain yeah. out there. It's, it's some kind of uh, craziness. Tommy, I'm sure you heard Elliot Wolf. What comment, maybe one, two, or three comments from Elliot Wolf stuck out to you, if anything? There were several. <laughs> and I, I would say this to begin with. I think that they need to start to temper a little bit of the doing jumping jacks over having a new and more open and honest way of doing things and treating people the right way. Yeah, Read read the room a little bit. I think that there is, despite the fact the Patriots weren't so great the last few years, and I've been very critical of a lot of the decisions they made, you want to stay away from grave dancing because it was the greatest dynasty in NFL history. And I think that these guys are a little bit liberated and they do want to do things in a different way and they do want to embrace the change that they're implementing. But everything they say infers what the changes are. And when you say, as Elliot Wolf did at the end, talking about the Packer way, which is honest and open and treating people the right way, it immediately infers that that's a departure from the Patriot way. And I think that that they need to be way more cognizant of what the fan base is feeling right now, post bill. And I think the fan base has its arms crossed and is tapping its feet and saying, how's this going to be different? And when you're saying it's going to be a full on departure from everything that bill did, okay, you might want to do that, but to articulate it in ways that draw negative implications for somebody who built so many of the things. And look, I've, I'll admit it. I've been extremely critical and we've talked about it week in and week out, but I think they want to be a little more circumspect with that stuff. Do you guys agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. And, and here's mm-hmm. the, I, I know like we were just, man, we only got through maybe, maybe two sound bites, uh, but we were going all over the place before you came on. And the one that kind of stood out to me among other ones, um, Tom was the whole uh, less of a, hard ass vibe in the building. What do you make of that comment? It just flows along the same line of thinking that I was mentioning is, you know, if, okay. If it's less of a hard ass vibe, it means it was a hard ass vibe. Well, what was wrong with the hard ass vibe? We've explored it. We've talked about it. We've discussed it. Um, over the course of time, decisions made where bill made the decisions and that was the way things went. And at the end, the decisions that bill made roster wise, coaching wise, free agent wise, didn't pan out. They didn't want him to be in charge of the rebuild. So they've moved on from him. But again, I I think it's, you can certainly talk about being open and collaborative without totally pissing off (laughs) what was here for 20 odd years. But, you know, cutting to the chase on what Wolf talked about, you know, I think the weaponization of the offense, the fact that he wants a quarterback who is a great leader and brings people with him, Uh, is certainly a departure from Mac Jones. He talked about body language and the fact that they don't want their quarterback gesticulating on the field and pointing at receivers and throwing their arms up, which, again, everything is going to infer what is different from the way things are, and it points directly at Mac Jones' bedside manner. So a number of things. There were a lot of nuggets in there that are worthwhile. Do you think this group who are running things now will get comfortable enough in their own skin to stop pointing out, Hey, here's how we're going to be different or here's how things used to be and all that. Do, do, do you think there will be a comfort level at some point where this kind of evens out or 
is this going to be like a little bit of a year-long narrative, Tom, in terms of, well, we had a lot to tear down to build it back up again? Well, I think it's already torn down. That's, But I do agree. I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, I do think it'll be a year-long process. I think they will continually look at, um, as they spoke about, as, as Wolf spoke about, you know, we have to be more explosive and faster on defense, which every team wants to be that, but the weaponization of the offense and the explosiveness. And I think he's also indicated um, that they want to make a real rush at the beginning of free agency. That, to me, is inferred by what they want to do. So they have the opportunity to make a lot of free agent moves that can help them right away, also in conjunction with the draft. He also said, which I thought was interesting, we're going to play young players and develop them. Again, everything they say is going to be measured against what we're accustomed to. So Demario Douglas spending half the season on the bench and then ending up with 50 catches for 500 yards and being their most productive receiver, what would he have been had he not been in detention for four weeks? All of these things, I think, lead us to wonder, you know, how aggressive will they be in this development? So it's, a lot of it is great. Turn over a new leaf, have a fresh set of eyes, have a different approach that players might embrace and look forward to coming to work more than they did previously. And it's hard to come to work when you're four and 13. Um, but all that stuff's great. I want to see how it looks when it's on the field. But I just think the overall tenor is a little overt in saying, yeah, the way it was working was, was, was bad, bad, bad. Yeah, it wasn't bad, bad, bad. Yeah, all the time. and Sorry. we're talking to Tommy Curry. And Tom, I'm, you know, uh, I, I, I don't know if you know or not, um, but I just wonder how Bill is receiving all of this, and, and if you think he's paying attention to it, and if he's, and if you're wondering if he, if he has this whole idea of I can't believe all I did for those guys, and they, at every opportunity they ripped me for the way things were. Do you have any idea I, of what he's thinking when no, he hears this? No idea, but I know that he's always been very attuned to what the media is talking about and the things that they're talking about. And when we talk to Mike Lombardi, who I think shares a brain with Bill, and he's very open in the way he thinks about things and, and speaks about things. Um, and, you know, he discusses the way Bill maybe will feel about things or felt about things while he was here. I think that Bill would be attuned to it. I don't think he'd be surprised by it. He certainly wouldn't be surprised by the fact that as you glean the dynasty and the episodes that are coming up, what role did Bill play in the disintegration of the tenor around the team? What role did Tom play? What role did Robert play? All those things have to be interrogated, but I think that Bill's reluctance to speak openly during the dynasty, he certainly knew what direction the conversation was heading, and he passed on the opportunity to to say, well, this is why I did what I did in many ways. And as a result, I'm sure he's not surprised that the tenor is, well, it went south because of Bill. And there's no getting around it. He, the football operation, everything about it began and ended with Bill. And there were people who were kicking at the door to try and say, we got to do it differently, and, and it didn't happen. So Bill's probably not psyched about it. But I, I don't know how – I don't specifically know how much plugged in any is with the day-to-day -day conversation, but I'm sure that he knows what the tenor might be. But I think that the fan base has also responded in a particular way, too, in terms of, okay, kind of what I'm talking about here today is let's not act like it was a friggin' disaster here. Uh, yeah, because it feels like it's going that way. Tom Kern with us. Uh, after listening to a little bit of Elliot Wolf, I'm further entrenched. They've already made up their mind at three. They're going for a quarterback. Do you still feel the same? I don't. I don't feel the same. I think that they should absolutely positively be open for business. I don't think I got anything today from him talking about that. I think that's their meaning. I think that's the franchise's meaning. But as I've said before, don't just draft a quarterback. You have to draft the quarterback. Regardless of what you think Chicago and Washington are going to do, you have to pick the guy that you think can come in here, play the position, deal with the adversity, which is going to be profound, deal with the weather, deal with the taxes, deal with uh, a new coaching staff, all of it being new. You have to deal with that. And that is as big, Christian, I think, as 
arm talent is the resiliency. Yeah, I'm with you. And just let me go back to um, the comment that he talked about. They want a quarterback who will be a leader and will you know, take people with them and, and all that stuff. I, I guess we were all just a, just a bunch of fools because everything coming out of you know camp and really every year was about what a great guy, what a uh, you know Mac Jones was, the swagger that he had, and all this other stuff. And and now it seems like the truth is that he was nothing but a problem from the beginning. He was a little you know childish. He was a little you know temperamental. I mean, it seems like like that's now the truth as opposed to what was. I feel like we are being fed as far as his personality and his ability to lead. I think you could be a really good guy who your teammates like an awful lot and still not be somebody that everyone looks at and says, he's going to drag me by the scruff of my neck to success. And I think that's kind of what exists with Mac. He's, I do believe that they thought that he would grow into the leadership role. And I think that he wanted to grow into the leadership role and, and could have grown into the leadership role. But, the situation that he was put into in 2022. And I think the climate within the team teammates who we've heard speak about how head scratching the decisions were probably gave him the latitude to at some point, look at the sidelines and say, well, this, this isn't working. This is making me look bad. This is ridiculous. I'm strapped to a bomb here. And as much as guys might've talked about it in the locker room or in private or over dinner to broadcast it, probably caused those players to say, well, you can't, you're not the linebacker or the lawn snapper. You can't do that. Mac probably caused them to lose some people. I don't think that he was a trash leader from the beginning. I think they hoped that he would grow into it. I think he could have, but the resiliency that he needed to show, which was profound, he was not able to summon. Tommy, uh, when it comes to the Patriots' crop of free agents, should I just assume they're all going to be gone under this new era and wave of, well, we got to do things different? These guys don't matter to us anymore. Can I just assume either the slate is so clean they haven't written in any names or that for a lot of these guys, they've already decided they're going to ship them off into the sweet good night or they're going to go somewhere else? I wouldn't think that. I would think Hunter Henry, Kyle Duggar, and Mike and Wenu would be guys that they really work hard to retain. Those three in particular. Um, and Wolf spoke about both Wolf, uh, Duggar and Wenu today. Said we're working with Kyle's agents and with Mike. So it seems as if Mike and Wenu could conceivably be representing himself. He's in an agent change right now, whether he hires an agent or not. But I wouldn't presume that. Those guys were, were valuable players. You know, they didn't play at a Pro Bowl level in 2023, but they're all capable players. If you bring them back under contract, they could start for a lot of teams in the NFL. So maybe most of them in case of Duggar and, and on Wenu, um, and they don't have any tight ends. So I would think that they're, they're going to really go hard at the guys they value, and those three would be at the top of the list. Very good. Tommy Kern of NBC Sports Boston. Tommy, thanks a bunch. Good we'll to have uh, you talk back. to you next week. Yeah, good to have you back. Good to See you guys. There we go. There goes uh, Tom Curran. And the reason I ask that is because there's so much of the well, the old was old. Yeah. That why would they? Why would they look at Duggar and I say Bill drafted him and say he's worth 17 million a year? Or why would they look at Onwenu and say he's worth 20 million a year? I'm just saying that if if a lot of the decisions of the past have been wrong then why would you then triple down and give those guys three or four times more money than they made last year?